Apple has launched with their customary flair the iPhone 4 with new IPS screen tech, double screen resolution, a better camera with shock horror, LED flash, HD video recording and an iMovie editing app to go with it. There's a faster processor too, plus a front camera for video calling. Ooh, very 2005. Only kidding, Apple fans. The most interesting design feature was the way the stainless steel case doubles as the main antennae. Should be no reception problems for 3G or Wi-Fi with this baby. Acer has announced the Stream, an Android 2.1 smartphone with a 3.7-inch capacitive touchscreen, 1 gigahertz processor and all mod cons. There's a custom 3D user interface plus a launch bar and a history panel for moving backwards and forwards between apps. Pre-installed are the Nemo multimedia player, the Acer Urufus app to create a virtual lookalike, and Spinlets, a free streaming music application. Motorola has announced the flip-out with a pivoting screen and a five-line QWERTY keyboard. There's Android 2.1 inside plus Motoblur for social network integration. Interestingly, the flip-out gets three battery modes for power saving, the chance to resize the widgets and place them on seven home screens, and a built-in data manager to see how many megabytes you're munching. Overall specs are quite low, though, with a 2.8-inch quarter VGA screen, a 3-megapixel camera, and a 1170 mAh battery. Motorola has also announced their Milestone XT720, at long last a camera-centric Android device, running Android 2.1 with the addition of Moto Blur as before. The XT720's main selling point is the 8-megapixel camera, which also shoots 720p video, plus a Xenon flash. There's also a 3.7-inch display with the usual top-end specs, though I was worried by the smallish 1390 mAh battery. Hi, my name's Andy Galpin and I've been using the N95 as my primary device for the past two years. It's an excellent smartphone, great camera on it and it's really easy to use. But I've found, using it over the last two years and with new technology developing, it's starting to lack in features and ways to extend it, especially the Obi store is not up to the standard of the iPhone store or even the Android store. So. For the past two, three weeks, I've been using the Motorola Milestone, or the Droid as it's known in the USA. Um, it's a great device, it's got a lovely large touch screen. Um, the tacky gold bit on the keyboard is not as noticeable as it is in the pictures, which was the one thing that put me off the looks of the device. Um, it's got a good build quality, the screen's slightly wobbly, but that's nothing to worry about, I don't think. Um, Android is great, I think it's far more functional than the iPhone OS currently is. Um, the keyboard on the on the Droid isn't as good as the N97 or, or the N97 Mini, but it does work well if you're doing lots of typing and it's far more accurate than the touchscreen, which is not as accurate as the iPhone either. Um, things that disappointed me with the Android operating system, there's still a couple of bugs with it. The screen wouldn't always lock properly. Um, the keyboard occasionally froze and I couldn't write anything into it, so you have to go back and go back into it. Um, landscape mode didn't work unless you had the keyboard folded out or you were within an application. So that's something that you want to look into when developing software. Uh, the battery life on the Milestone was very poor unless you turned off the 3G. Um, before, while having the 3G on, it lasted about half a day. I had to charge it twice twice a day in order to use it generally for general use um, but once you turn off the 3G which I found I didn't get much 3G signal from Vodafone anyway and um, it lasted about the same amount as the N95. Um, apps I'd recommend is Google Apps Navigation uh, Google Maps Navigation sorry uh, that's a great great uh, navigation and replacement for Ovi Maps which is now free on Nokia devices um, where's my droid which uh, if you lose your phone quite often is quite useful you can text it a keyword and it will make lots of noise until you find it um, abduction which is similar to doodle jump on the iPhone and it's free the free version has lots of levels on it and it's really good um, PA droid is an excellent note-taking application it's very basic and it's free as well um, overall I think it's a great device I would highly recommend it to those looking for an Android device with a full QWERTY keyboard and a strong build quality um, I'm quite impressed with Motorola this time their other devices have not impressed me at all and this is a step in the right direction Continuing my review run of smartphones that are fatally flawed I bring you the LG InTouch Max GW620. No, don't laugh, that really is its full name. The GW620 to you and I is a slightly retro looking HTC Wing from 2007 like Android smartphone with exactly one major selling point. Well, 
two if you count the contract price. I've seen this as low as £180 over 18 months in the UK on T-Mobile. The big USP here is the full width five row QWERTY keyboard. At first rather insubstantial, but it soon grows in you and ended up being the feature I'd most recommend. Aside from having to function press to get a comma, this keyboard has got the lot and knocks that in my milestone into a cocked hat. The slide mechanism is positive and spring assisted, but I had my doubts about the twisting possible in the upper half. Watch this. Prominent on the front, of course, is the screen, another area where LG keep completely screwing things up. You'll remember the budget QWERTY KS360, which had a touchscreen that it wasn't actually used in any app apart from the Tyler. The GW620 improves by having a resistive touchscreen that's used throughout, but then adds two capacitive hotspots on the bottom panel. These are far too easy to catch by mistake and should have been resistive or physical buttons. In other words, LG have this the wrong way round. The main screen should have been capacitive and far more responsive instead. Also runs the way the central mechanical button is the menu, while the touch spot is the home command. It's just the wrong way around. Also notable around the exterior are a 3.5mm audio jack, a dedicated music player shortcut key, a good two-stage camera shutter button and a micro USB data port. Under the hood there's a 1500mAh battery that, no matter the GW620's other faults, keeps things chugging along for a couple of days. RAM is similar to most other Android phones with the, the OS and apps using most of the 100 or so megabytes of RAM most of the time. Display resolution is iPhone standard, that's 320 by 480 pixels, but it's small at only 3 inches. Uh, it's cheap TFT too, and complete rubbish outdoors and sunlight. Above the display is the sole speaker, doing double duty for calls and media playback. It's not that loud, but adequate for hands-free use. I've bemoaned the camera units that HTC have been putting into its Android phones in the last year, but LG's is quite a bit worse. Stand and snaps and good light are okay, but focusing is a veritable nightmare, as you can see here. Low light shots are appalling and video recording is a very blocky, low grade quarter VGA. LG might not as well have bothered. And this is test video at quarter VGA on the LG GW620. Make your own mind up. And now back to the N86. Now, do you want the good news or the bad news? The bad first? Okay, the GW620 runs Android 1.5, the same as the original T-Mobile G1 when it first launched well over a year ago. There are whispers of an update, maybe to Android 1.6, but don't hold your breath. The use of something so old means that many cutting-edge Android applications, uh, e.g. Google Maps with navigation or Google Goggles, they don't even appear here in the Android market and so can't be installed. Great shame. The good news is that LG have put a decent amount of effort into the software package that new users see. As well as the standard Android home screen, there's this alternative LGified version with four permanent icons at the bottom, including the app launcher. And when you do tap that, uh, you get a pre-sorted set of application categories rather than a long alphabetic list. It's refreshingly different, though no faster in real life use. In terms of software loadout, LG has added the Moxie Microsoft Exchange Suite plus the ArcSoft Media Suite, meaning that undemanding users may not even have to delve too deeply into the Android market at all. Video playback was okay, ditto music, but to be honest, there's, there's nothing here that stands out. Some Android staples are even a lot worse than the average. Web browsing suffers hugely from the screen size, uh, from the resistive touch tech used, and from the poor implementation. LG haven't even used the standard double tap to zoom in convention. All you get is a slide-in panel of icons that gets in the way more often than not. One of the worst web browsing experiences of late. The SNS system from LG offers basic Twitter, Facebook and Bebo clients, all pretty neatly thought out. There's nothing earth shattering and they won't compete with the best from the Android market, but they are all functional. Here's the Twitter client following through to my profile. Uh, let's switch over to the Facebook client. I did find I had a tendency to forget my username and password, which may just be teething troubles because it was a new device. Here viewing my Facebook inbox. Rather curiously, the fonts are much, much better and clearer in this landscape mode with the keyboard open than they are in the, uh, the portrait mode with the keyboard closed. Uh, let's try adding an account for Bebo, and there's the login screen for entering your Bebo details. At the offer price I found, £180 over 18 months with data thrown in the, in the UK. The GW620 isn't a bad deal for those who want their first Android smartphone. 
the keyboard's good, and for messaging and email, the phone excels. And it does have all mod cons, Wi-Fi, 3.5G, GPS. But I can't possibly recommend the device SIM free with all its problems, screen, camera, touch, OS version. It's just too expensive for what it is. This might be the Android phone you get your teenager, but as a phone show viewer, I think you deserve better. The LG GW620 InTouch Max something.